Welcome, Welcome back, back to Out of Controllers, Controllers where I someone unprofessionally up. continues I playing the game. Up. I'm just like on autopilot. Uh huh, sure. You just need more of them grams, whatever type of gram you can get. Reno, Nano, Sudoku, which is not a gram, sadly. Hmm. So many puzzles. Do we want to solve more puzzles, guys? I mean, sure. Let's just make this another puzzle-centric episode. <laughs> I love the puzzles! If you don't like puzzles, audience, I hope you're not watching these as they come out, because you have no <laughs> options. But after this, you can just skip ahead this, these episodes and don't watch them. Mm-hmm. It'll be great. Because I honestly promise you this will probably be the, another puzzle-centric episode. Unless we run out of puzzles. I mean, yes, but I feel like it will take us ten minutes to solve three puzzles. Even at your astounding skill. No. Oh, no. That's not how that this was, works. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just want to make sure we all knew that Mariposa was fucking yeah. up. Sometimes I understand puzzle rules. Do but you? only sometimes. <laughs> Okay, I was gonna say. Yeah, but you, it took me so long. Do you remember trying to teach me Picross? Oh, it man. was incredible, it, audience. It was pretty remarkable. It was fucking rad. Also frustrating, I'm sure. I mean... Not the worst thing ever. No, I kind of liked it because it meant, like, the where I learned to play Picross was... Um, there's a free Pokemon Picross game where basically you catch Pokemon by solving a Picross puzzle of them. And I have it on my DS and Dan has it on his DS. And so, of course, when he had it, he could not figure out how to play it. So for me, it was like, well, I can play Picross on mine. And then since he doesn't understand it on his, I can just play that one too. So it was pretty great. It's true. And then he figured could. out how to play. And then I was sad. I mean... It was through a lot of your teaching. I think you should have been proud. I was mostly sad. <laughs> Excuse me. Also, what are you do oh, okay, I understand what you're doing now. I was like, what is happening? She's struggling. I mean, this is a more difficult yeah, puzzle. Yeah, this is tougher. Mm -hmm. When all the number numbers are small audience, that means it's hard. Sometimes. Sometimes. I mean, typically. Like, when it's, like, one, and, like, one in, like, a 20 by 20 puzzle, and I'm like, I hate you. That's true. Yes, that's the worst. It's like, there's one in these 20 spaces that's, f like, filled in. That means I have a huge chance of filling in the wrong one when I guess, because that's how I solve Picross puzzles, audience. Which is fine in Pokemon, because, like, you have... Pokemon helpers who are oh, like, those powers you're are great. doing it wrong! And you're like, great, thanks. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Why are you a douche? <laughs> well, no, but it's also like, you're doing it wrong! Let me fix it for you. It's true. Mm, okay, you could put an X next to that one on the side there. Okay. you got. Yeah, it. she's you just not it. putting in Xs. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Just don't it explain just helps, anything for like, audience. It's fine. Don't don't Poor do the thing audience. that helps you. I've just gotten really used there's to a, there's this. one here. Ah uh, yes, thank you. Yeah. I forgot what I was doing because some people distracted me. And then there's an X here. Yes. There's also another one. And then you fucked up somewhere. Did she? Yeah. Did I? Oh. And the one three one line, uh, three down on the left column. Oh, I did. Gonna guess that one though. Yeah. Since it has to make a fucking picture. Also because it's like. Mostly because it has to make a fucking picture. <laughs> it's a snail shell, audience. I've spoiled the puzzle. You're solved. You're welcome. More Sudoku. Oh boy. Such fun. How many numbers can we fill in now? These are probably, like, gonna be some of the last ones. Yeah, probably. That he's gonna give us. Because I mean, after yes, that, it's likely. gonna get, like. 
too hard for little kids. In the meantime, Dan, why don't you and I tell wacky stories from our childhood so Mariposa can focus, and this is still interesting for the audience. All right, sure. <laughs> what sort of wacky stories? Let's pick a childhood topic. Mariposa, uh, what's yeah. a childhood <laughs> topic? Give us a topic. Um, adventures. Uh, I once ran away, but it was mostly exactly from my adventure. sibling I who was telling me I couldn't run away and that I would die, and I said no, I'd have oh, some sandwiches and I'd be fine. Stupid. And then I sort of successfully escaped, and then mostly I was like, now I'll double back to the house <laughs> and luck here out, and it didn't work because I forgot about the back door. Because <laughs> I'm smart. <laughs> How old were you? Uh, I don't really remember. I can't remember. Like, I have to remember things in, like, pre or post our trip around the country. <laughs> Because I'm like, I was That's probably fair. eight, and I can't remember if it was pre or post that time. Daniel, tell the audience about your family's trip around the country. All right, so when I was supposed to be in third grade, when you're like, I don't know, eight or something? I forget how old people I are. I fucking know. Uh, eight or nine. Uh, instead of going to school to the third grade, my mom was like, how about we go on a road trip around the United States? And I was like, chill. Uh, I had a Pokemon game at that point, and I was like, this sounds like a great opportunity to play more Pokemon. Uh, and then we saw majestic marvels that the United States has to offer, and I was busy playing Pokemon Sapphire. And it was great. I remember Disney World, because that was fun. I rolled the rock and roller coaster four times in a row. Yeah, I feel like I'm getting shitty at this. Uh, <laughs> I remember the Biltmore House, because it was really big, and I wanted a house like that. Uh... We went to Edgar Allan, Poe, Edgar Allan Poe's house, and just as we stepped over the threshold, thunder cracked, and therefore we left. <laughs> I think also the place was closed, but, like, the door was open for some reason. And there was, like, a statue of a raven on just, like, a weird-ass podium in a <laughs> driveway, and I was like, okay, they're really selling that hard, aren't they? He used I mean, yeah. to apologize to his guests because he didn't have a pet raven, mm -hmm. and so people would, like, come over. And he was actually really witty and funny and cordial. Cordial? Which one? Uh, this one right here. Oh. Okay. Five goes in the center. Oh, my God. You're welcome, audience. That's my story. Five goes in the center. That's really important to know. Um, yeah, I don't have any, like, super fun stories like uh, that. I mean... I mean, not from my childhood. Okay, like, not, like, going around the fucking country, but, like... The most interesting, like, road trip I ever took was, um... We once drove from Illinois to... Yellowstone National Park, which I want to say is somewhere near Wyoming. Yeah, yeah. Wyoming and Montana. That's pretty far. Yeah. So, yeah, it was pretty far, and we drove through several states. Um, I also got in a car accident in Nowheresville, um, Nebraska, oh. coming back from a ski trip. Um, and it was, like, it was one of those things where, um, like, it was winter, obviously, because we had been skiing, um, and my mom was passing a truck when she hit a patch of black ice and she started fishtailing and she had just about gotten the car back under control when um, the back of the car like clipped the side of the truck we were passing and we went spinning out into the median. Oh shit. Yeah. yeah. So like nobody was hurt but of course our back windows were all shattered and like this truck didn't even have a dent on it. It just had like a bit of blue paint scraped on the side of, of it. Of course not. Those <laughs> trucks can like destroy anything <laughs> um me but, too <laughs> so you know like it's winter and we're sitting in the car and we're all a little bit shell-shocked um and so that we have to wait for the cops to show up and so the trucker was like hey do you guys want to sit in my cabin so we all sat in the trucker's cabin and like i wish i remembered it better but honestly i had just been in a car crash so i was not paying much attention yeah. Well, that's like, I have a story about that with a car crash. Here, does someone else want to take over the Sudoku while I yeah. tell the story? I'll do it, because I'm the most ineffectual. No, here, I'll do it. Excuse me. <laughs> um, I was going to be great. When I was little, I was probably like four or five at this point. Um, I was in a car crash. To sort of understand the car crash, you have to understand the way that my neighborhood is set up. My neighborhood, the entrance to, I'm, I live above a ski resort. And, um, this is actually important. 
<laughs> I don't think you could do it in 10 seconds. <laughs> Listen. No. No, okay. please. Set the establishing thing in the next episode. I, I, we'll actually hear the story. <laughs> I live above a ski resort, right? And um, as soon as you get into my neighborhood, there's a blind curve. So coming out of the neighborhood, there's the same blind curve. And then the, the thing is with the ski resort parking lot... Um, there's this one part where the actual road goes up, like, on the, le on the left as you're going up the hill. And um, the parking lot sort of branches out on the right and then rejoins the road. So it's a one-way parking lot. These hand visuals would be very good for the audience. <laughs> and now, next time on Out of Controllers, we keep doing Sudoku and telling you stories. Get to hear the rest of my exciting story. Oh, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Bye. Bye.